but Hi. Welcome to our channel. Hey everybody welcome back today we're going to be taking a look at the ruger pc charger so what we're going to do is put this thing on the tabletop and we're going to go over all the features that it comes with out of the box and then we're going to go over all the accessories that i've added and go over my experiences with it so far Give you a little bit of history on the pc series from ruger they originally came out with the pc carbine in the mid to late 90s and then discontinued it in the early 2000s they re then re-released the pc carbine a updated version and i believe it was either 2017 or 2018 then fast forward now to 2020 and the pc charger that you see here is the next evolution of the pc series from ruger it does use a direct blowback system. Ruger calls it their uh, dead blow blowback. From what I understand, it has a tungsten weight inside of it. I don't fully understand how all of that works, but I do know they advertise that it is supposed to help reduce recoil. And I would have to say, compared to something like this AR9 here, which is a true direct blowback, the Ruger does have significantly less recoil, uh, and you definitely can notice the difference. We're gonna start at the muzzle and work our way all the way down the firearm. I'm just going to go over some of the features that it comes with out of the box and also go over some of the things I've added. Obviously, the firearm has already been safety checked and is unloaded, so you'll have to take my word on that. First thing here at the muzzle, we have a 6.5 inch barrel. It is obviously chambered in 9mm. The barrel is a cold hammer forged and it is threaded half by 28 for suppressors or muzzle brakes or anything like that. Here on the handguard, we have M lock at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position. I do have some rubberized Magpul M-Lock covers in there just to give it a little bit more texture. Out of the box, it did come with this little hand stop, which was mounted right here on the bottom M-Lock section. On these little short guns like this, I normally would definitely recommend that you keep this hand stop on there because it does serve a very valuable purpose, which is to keep your hand from getting in front of the muzzle. In my case, I added a weapon light on the other side, so that weapon light serves now as my hand stop. So that is the reason that I took that off. Speaking of the weapon light, what I have here is a Enforce WML 400, and I've got it mounted on a BCM mount. This mount goes directly to the M-Lock, and then it mounts a piece of Picatinny rail at a 45 degree angle. And for my hand, it's perfect. When I grab the firearm with my thumb over the bore like this, I can just come right over and hit the light, and then I can flip that up to lock out so I don't hit the light by accident. So the weapon is a takedown, just like all of the PC series. All you do to take it down is you simply lock the bolt to the rear, have a little tab right here, 
you just pull and twist that tab and the whole barrel will come right off. Now I know a lot of people were concerned that having a takedown feature like this would affect your accuracy. So if you, for instance, zeroed your optic and then took it apart and put it in a bag, would it be able to maintain zero when you put it back on? Uh, the answer, the short answer to that is yes, it will maintain zero, at least in a practical sense. If you'll stay tuned to the end, I have a test of just that that will be in the shooting footage. Moving on down, next thing we have here is the magazine release. It is very easy to swap the mag release to either side. I prefer it here on the left side. When I come up, I can just index it with my thumb and pull the magazine out. I've tried numerous different magazines. Uh, so that's a Magpul 21 rounder there. We've got Glock mags. I've got the SGM mags, a Men 2 mags, and ETS mags. So I've tried quite a bit of mags. If you watch the shooting footage at the end, you'll see every one of these mags getting shot. Next thing we have here is the Magwell. It does have a really nice flaring all the way around. And I really do like that. It just really helps to guide those magazines in. Out of the box, it's going to come with the Ruger Magwell adapter, which will allow it to take the Ruger magazines. I did not even fire the gun uh, in that configuration. I took it straight out of the box and put the Glock magazine adapter, which does come with the gun, uh, just for the obvious reason of being able to run Glock mags. They're highly available. They're very reliable. They're cheap. And when it comes to carbines like this in 9mm, I personally don't have an interest in any of them that don't take Glock mags. Next thing we have right here on the receiver is we do have a Picatinny rail that is machined in the top all the way down. So that's nice. I did mount right here on top a Holosun 503GU optic. So this is the one that has the dot and then you can press and hold the button and it also has a circle dot. If you're in the market for a... I won't call it cheap, but a budget-friendly red dot that is still really, really durable. I would definitely check out Holosuns. They're really great for the money. Also, right here, we have the charging handle. The charging handle can very easily be reversed to either side just by pulling out that one screw. I did. It comes on the right side out of the box, but I did go ahead and swap it here to the left-hand side, which is what I prefer. Next, we have your cross-bolt safety. So that's just real simple cross-bolt safety. Uh, nothing too fancy there. Then we have the trigger. I believe they advertise the trigger at four and a half or five pounds. On mine gauge, mine breaks uh, just a hair under four and a half pounds pretty consistently. It is a pretty good trigger though. Turn the safety off. I do have the gun in a safe direction. Nice break, action cycles, reset. The reset's very audible and tactical. Um, I really don't have a problem with this trigger, I'll be honest. Um, I mean, there's better triggers out there for sure, but there's definitely a whole lot worse. It does take any of your standard AR grips. Now, it did come factory with a Ruger grip, and there's really nothing wrong with that Ruger grip. I actually do like it, but on these shorter weapons like this, I prefer something with a little bit more vertical angle. So I did swap it out to this BCM Mod 3. If you've seen some of my AR videos, you'll see that this is pretty much my go-to grip on any AR, and that's uh, really no exception on this gun here. So the next thing we have is we do have sling mounts. We do have a hole here for a QD socket on each side of the firearm. Most of you that watch my channel probably know I uh, pretty much despise one-point slings. I do not run them on anything, and I just simply don't like them, and there's a whole lot of reasons behind that. Uh, on this firearm, there is an exception to that. Being that it is such a short firearm, this is one of the very limited places where a one-point sling, in my opinion, still makes sense, and that's generally what I will run on something like this. Only on short firearms like that. Same thing goes for a little AR-9 like this. That is kind of the only application for a one-point sling, in my personal opinion. Uh, moving on back to the firearm, we have a section of Picatinny rail that is machined into the receiver here, which is obviously for mounting braces, or you could mount a stock to this if you did the appropriate paperwork and converted it to an SBR. I have a FS-1913 brace made by ST SB Tactical, excuse me, this is the one that has the aluminum strut, does have a steel hinge, and then you've got your brace portion in the back, so you can stick your arm through here and brace the pistol that way. Uh, SB Tactical also advertises that you can strap it to your arm, you can put it on your cheek, you can bump it on your shoulder. Just any way that you might find to shoot a handgun, this brace will work well for that. Brace also is a folder, so that is obviously a very nice feature, especially when you couple it with the fact that this is a takedown you can have an extremely small package. I mean, this thing literally would fit into a lunchbox if you were so inclined to do so. 
So that is definitely a, uh, a big feature in my opinion. And one of the reasons that really attracted me to this firearm is the fact that I could have a takedown and then the option of a folding brace at the same time. Now, one problem I did have with this brace, when I originally installed it out of the box, the brace did fold to the left side of the firearm. And the problem that I was having is under recoil, the brace mechanism, if I can do it, would actually fold and hinge as I was shooting the gun. Like I said, when it was folding to the other side. So that was definitely a problem. I contacted SB Tactical, and they actually sent me out another complete brace. Um, while I was waiting for that brace to come in, they, con they contacted me and said that they had discovered that there was an issue with this brace when mounted to the charger. So the new brace that they sent me was not going to fix the problem. Well, they were exactly right. The new brace came in, I installed it, had the same problem. One of the things that they wanted me to go out and try was I simply took this Allen screw out of the back of the brace here, if you can see that, and I reversed the hinge. So what that made happen is it made, instead of the brace folding on the left, it now folds on the right side of the farm. And from everything that I can tell so far, that has fixed the issue. Um, what it's now doing is every time the firearm is recoiling, it is actually, the pressure is going into the lockup of this and it is making it lock up tighter and tighter every time you fire it. As before, when you would fire it, it would be knocking the brace in the unlock position. And as best I can tell, that has completely resolved the issue. SB Tactical has been very helpful. They even allowed me to keep the second brace that they sent me. So I now have two of these uh, FS uh, 1913 braces. So that was really nice of them. And they also told me in the future, if they do come out with a, another fix for this, because I honestly believe that it is fixed the way it is by simply reversing that brace. But if they do come out with a more updated version, they would also send me that as well. So I thought that was a really great customer service by FB Tactical, and I really appreciate them working with me on that. So the next thing I want to talk about is accuracy. Obviously a very small firearm with a 6-inch barrel. Um, I was very, very pleased with the accuracy of this. Uh, if you want to see the actual groups and things like that that I shot, just stay tuned to the end. I have several different accuracy tests in the shooting footage testing different types of ammo and things like that. I also have a test where I'm comparing the height over bore. If you shoot ARs a lot, you'll know that height over bore is a very real thing, and you have to understand that to know your appropriate holds at different distance. So I did a quick test to figure out how that would work on this gun. That's also going to be in the shooting footage at the end. Next thing is going to be reliability. Right now I have just over 500 rounds through this gun, and I have had one malfunction. And that malfunction, in my opinion, was not gun related because it was with a ETS magazine. I'll put that clip of the malfunction in the shooting footage. My wife was shooting it. It was browning 124 grain ammo. And we just had a round that did not quite feed into the chamber all the way. You know, you can draw your own opinion from that. I personally do not hold that against the gun at all because... Even though I like these magazines and I do use them on the range and things like that, they are probably one of the worst Glock magazines you can get. Now, I know a lot of people aren't going to like ha hearing that, but these are pretty much the only magazines that I've ever had in a Glock that will occasionally cause a malfunction. So I don't put that against it at all. As I mentioned earlier, I've tried a lot of other magazines in this gun. Here's just a few examples of the ones I have, and every one of these have been perfectly reliable. Also, when it comes to reliability, I have tested multiple different kinds of hollow points in this gun. Most of them have been Federal HST 124 grain, but I've also tried some Cellar and Bellet hollow points, Winchester hollow points, and Monarch hollow points. And they were all fed and functioned perfectly fine. You can once again stay tuned to the end in the shooting footage if you want to see all those testing with hollow points. Another thing I wanted to mention is my wife is not super picky when it comes to firearms. But she does have the ones she likes and the ones that she absolutely doesn't like. And then the rest of them kind of fall in that just okay category for her. Uh, it's very rare that a firearm comes along that she absolutely hates. And it's very rare that one comes along that she really likes. An example of that would be the Springfield Armory Hellcat that I did a video on. We put well over a thousand rounds through that gun. And that was one firearm that she just hated. She just simply did not like it, did not want to shoot it, and did not enjoy it. With that said, this is one that she just really likes. It really surprised me that she liked it as much as she does, but literally every time that we've taken this thing out and shoot it, she has commented the fact that she really does like it. So I just thought that would be worth mentioning since she is uh, not too impressed by the newest and greatest firearms, and this one she was impressed by. 
All things considered, I have been very happy with the performance of the PC charger. That one malfunction with the ETS mag isn't something that I personally hold against it. That magazine itself is very old, never been cleaned, and I've always found those ETS mags to be spotty reliable at best. But I think this thing would make a great option for somebody that wants maybe a backpack gun or, you know, a little truck gun or something like that, maybe a travel gun. Being able to fold with this uh, SP Tactical Brace and then the takedown feature, it will fit places that there's really nothing else that will fit. Um, still being a handgun by law makes it, you know, where you can travel with this to a lot of different states. Of course, you'll have to check each state before you do that. So that in itself is uh, makes this thing have a lot of it of value. You know, you could easily go with something like this AR-9 here. This is a five and a half inch barrel AR-9. It's got an SB Tactical SBA-3, and it does also take Glock mags. And uh, I still like this AR-9. I've had this one for a long time, and I don't plan to get rid of it. But if I could only have one, there would be no question in my mind, it would be the PC charger. It just, the takedown feature and the ability to have this folder just makes it, you know, something special in my opinion. And I've had experience with CZ Scorpions and some of the other pistol caliber pistols on the market. And I know a lot of people won't agree with this. Right now, this is probably, or is definitely, hands down, my favorite one that is currently on the market, especially when you figure in the price. If y'all have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them below. If you're not following me on Instagram, I would also appreciate you do that. If you need to ask me anything directly, that is definitely the best place to do so. Also, uh, my wife now has a YouTube channel that she just recently started. So if you would, go over there and follow her. Her channel is called Messy Buns and Guns. She's going to do a little bit of firearm stuff. She's going to do some blogging, probably some cooking. So if you got girlfriends or wives that like that kind of stuff, definitely go check them out. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Quick accuracy test, shooting at 50 yards. First five rounds are 115 grain gecko. Second five rounds will be 115 grain Aguila. And the last five rounds will be 124 grain Browning. So there's my target, there's the first five rounds, that is the gecko, you see we got a one, two, three, four, and I guess that's the fifth round right there I'm assuming, so this would have been the Aguila, and then one, two, three, four, five right there, that would be the Browning. So the Aguila definitely was the most accurate, I don't know if that one round could have been me, um, these are obviously playing guards, so you can kind of estimate about how big those groups are but of course it's 50 yards with a red dot so pretty good accuracy in my opinion 124 grain cellar and bellet hollow points perfect federal 124 grain hst a few more rounds going through the PC charger. Monarch 124 grain hollow points. of federal 124 grain hst i'm going to try a few of them through the pc charger
Perfect. So we're going to do a quick little test with the takedown and see if we get any kind of point of impact shift after taking it apart a couple times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fire a five round group. I'm shooting Browning 124 grain ammo and my target is downrange at 25 yards. After I fire five shots, I'm going to take the barrel on and off a few times, cycle the action a few times, and then fire another five round group and see if we get any kind of shift. All right, so there's the first five. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the gun pointed down range, take the upper off, cycle the action a few times, put it back on, take it back off, do it one more time just for good measure. If I can get it to go in, there we go. So now I'm gonna load up and shoot a, another five shot group See if we got any kind of point of impact shift. Alright, let's go down range and check it out. Alright, so here's both my targets. We got five hits there. Looks like one, two, and then we got three in one hole. And then after taking the barrel on and off a few times, I shot this five shot group. So we got one, two, three, and then two in the same hole right there. So I know this is only 25 yards, but uh, as you can see, it looks like there's basically no point of impact shift after using the takedown feature. So that's definitely a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna do another quick test with the little PC charger. I've got four targets set up uh, at 10, 25, 50, and 100 yards. I'm gonna shoot five rounds in each target and just see what kind of uh, accuracy I get as far as where my point of impact is in relation to my point of aim. I'm gonna hold center on all four targets and just see what we get. And I'm using Browning 124 grain uh, ball ammo. Let's go check them out. So there is the first five rounds all in one ragged hole. So nothing to complain about there. So here's the next target. This is 25 yards. So once again, you can see we got five rounds kind of in one uh, ragged hole. I am holding center on every one of these targets. And as you can see, I'm hitting just a little bit to the left. Uh, that's no fault of the gun. I just have not really 100% zeroed this thing yet. I just threw the red dot on there and got it hitting steel and started doing this test. And here is the third target. This is at 50 yards. As you can see, we got one, two, and then it looks like three in one hole. Uh, it's not a bad group, probably about the size of a baseball. Uh, so that's the 50 yard target. <laughs> Here is the 100 yard target. So we got one, two, three, four, five. I have a uh, medium to large hands. I wear a large size glove. And you can see I got about a fist size group. With my eyesight at 100 yards with red dot, that is not bad at all in my opinion. So what I was trying to test here with the height over war was the point of aim versus point of impact in relation to the optic being so high above the bore. And I think this test pretty much shows going from 10 yards all the way out to the 100 yard target here that your point of aim, point of impact in relation to how high the optic is, is basically going to be exactly the same from zero all the way to 100.
malfunction? Yeah. The very first one. And we don't count it against it because see what mag it is. There you are. 